जी जी ओके एंड दिस न्यूरॉन टेक्स फोर इनपुट्स सो द फोर टेक्स दिस न्यूरॉन टेक्स फोर इनपुट्स फोर दिस न्यूरॉन टेक बी प्लस वन इनपुट्स यस दिस न्यूरॉन टेक फोर इनपुट्स दिस न्यूरॉन टेक वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव इनपुट्स इसके तो अपने बेड्स होंगे हर न्यूरॉन के अपने बेड्स यस एंड समर एट द एंड ऑफ द this and that and that's the output of the jersey board say it this is for input layer which the input is presented one by one one feature pattern goes to the input and the other feature so it goes to using a stochastic gradient fashion rather than just a stochastic gradient is that come later one example at a time yahan pe bhi one example at a time okay ho jayegi in in the case of big data we have a lot of data uh, running this and that so it's very slow So we will apply this to gas gradient descent for the gradient as we know it. This I will discuss in detail. So this is the input layer. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This neural network is called six-layer neural network. Input layer is not counted. That is just a, a tradition. I mean, people do not count the input layer in the total number of layers. So this is a six-layer neural network. Mm -hmm. uh, this is input layer. This is output layer. And this six new. Uh, six layer neural network. Input layer sees the input features. Output layer sees the label. You may say compare that with the actual label. The label that any process is done. So it sees something out from the data. It sees something from the data. However, these layers they do not see the data directly. That's why all these layers they are called hidden layers. Hmm. I mean, with respect to data, the layers are hidden. Make sense. So in this particular case, one, two, three, four, five hidden layers. In this six-layer neural network, five layers are hidden. Make sense. Uh, now the, the question may be: This is one way. This is one architecture. Of, this is one neural network. The, the things to decide when you design neural network: How many layers should be there? Mm. Uh, there is no critical or any answer to that. I mean. There are rules of thumb, but you have to try different layers and stuff. How many neurons per layer? Her layer many neurons per layer. So, they can be nine, they can be five, they can be more, they can be less. No necessarily that you have to have all the neurons same or not. Or actually, you have to be different layers. Okay? How many layers? How many neurons per layer? Which activation function to choose? Are the activation functions same across all the neurons across the layer? Or can I use different? All these questions are completely, I mean, cross-validated over data. I mean, you try these many layers, these many neurons, this kind of arrangement, and come to the result. If that doesn't work, change the architecture and stuff. Make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, there are some famous architectures people come up with after a lot of struggle that having these many layers with these kind of connections, this way works very fine on my data and it tends to work on your data as well. So there are some famous uh, neural network architectures which we should adopt rather than building from scratch. But if on your data set, if everything should be done from scratch, it should be done from scratch. But the recommendation is use the famous architectures. People come up with these many layers and stuff like that, and so on. Um, one more thing, there is a strict rule that this layer will be fed through the previous layer. Mm. And then this layer will be fed to the previous layer. You cannot do the layer skipping. So, okay, yes. uh, that was a traditional architecture. You cannot fed, you, you cannot do the layer skipping. But in the recent architecture, one is called the rest net. Rest net. It actually it actually skips one layer and it perform, it outperforms the previous. They they say that if you skip one, if you allow to skip one layer. Uh, alternatively, then uh, there are some there are certain achievements that are there that are not there without this skipping. So, uh, the third thing is improvement. Is it, is improvement in terms of I mean, time or efficiency? In terms of time and uh, in terms of time as well. Yes. So they say, in particular, they say there is an identity function that is not learnable if you do not skip. If you skip, there is a particular kind of learnability that is achievable. Achha. So. Having said that, this is again a practical observation and stuff like that. Okay. So before the resonance, this was not allowed. So when I will present resonance to you, then I will, I will show you that 
how this city is going to tell that it's not at all. Until the um, development of recurrent networks, the feedback was not allowed. So there is no back edge. Mm -hmm. But in recurrent networks, the feedbacks are allowed. So, so you give the feedback of every three months to different previous neurons and stuff like that. But uh, these are called recurrent neural networks. So recurrent neural networks allow the back edges. ResNets allow the, the layer scaling. But in the, in the very starting architectures of neural networks, and the most famous architectures, they don't use, uh, uh, the traditional architectures, they have stick to this do not layer scale. Fully connection model, as Sunny knows it, is possible when do connect the other So the rules are, and by the way, these rules are, I mean, I mean you can break these rules and come up with a better development. It, all that thing is data dependent and the application at hand, what things works and what doesn't work. This is the strict architecture, and in this architecture we will implement the how to learn, how to learn all these things uh, by using stochastic APIs and next time. Then I'll show you um, in the very last lectures, I will show you the famous architectures, the ResNet, ConceptionNet, uh, LeanNet, and some other uh, things that have a particular kind of architecture, and if you want to use classification, adopt those networks and they are good starting point to do. Make sense? Yes? Uh, final remark, you don't have um, high performance computing powered with GPUs, you don't have big data support with you, you have, you have some amount of data on your CPU, how can you use deep learning? There is, called, there is, there is a term called transfer learning in which you can, you can use the learning weights of another person who have who have done the who have, who have done training the deep network over months and he has certain weights you can use those weights on your data with some layers rebuild it and with your small amount of data it works so you can apply deep net or learning of deep net on your laptop with the transfer learning mm -hmm. which is not optimal if we do it from scratch but I mean, that is something we achieve. Make sense? So, uh, on Thursday, I will show you the learning algorithm on the neural network. Thank you.